Big Boys Big Neighborhood, boys. Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, man. All righty. For those that know, they know. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, here's an introduction. Yep. And if with this introduction, or if you do or you don't know, there's going to be a lot of things learned today. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because when I get with Idris, I learn a lot. And then there's other times, Idris Sandu, where you talk... And I don't know quite what you're saying, but I shake my head. You know what I'm saying? I, I shake my head. I just send you in the neighborhood. Welcome to the neighborhood, man. Thank you so much. I just, if I were to give you a title, what would that title be? Ooh, architect. Architect. As a verb. Uh -huh. Oh, oh no. No. see, now, now we're getting into verbs. <laughs> nah, nah, as a You're now. not going to do predicates and shit. Uh, no, uh, nah. <laughs> Please I mean, don't feel, get into predicates. Yeah. I feel like that's important. And all of us are architects as a verb. Because if you think of it as a noun, it's it's somebody that builds buildings, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. But as a verb, it means to take a figment of an idea and make it into an actual thing. Okay. Well, you got to get so. out of here. It's, <laughs> it's, it's already it's, it's too already intelligent promised. in here. It's already too much, man. Technolo <laughs> technological design consultant and engineer. Mm -hmm. Now, for one, I just want to give you just 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 a little backstory so we don't have to go through everything. At age ten, started learning computer programming using the public library. At 13, became an intern at Google, worked on several projects, wow. including social media platform Google+. At 15, created his first app. At 15, made it easier for classmates to find their classrooms. All righty. At age 15, also was given the Presidential Scholar Award by President Barack <gasps> Obama. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. That's, dope. that's just me saying so it in bad. a nutshell. And, wow. and, 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 and there's more accolades. There's more. But as... A teenager, what gets you going into something when teenagers, modern day, if we say modern day, why you weren't playing the Fortnite of yesteryear? I mean, um, or did you I create think, Fortnite? Come on, talk to me. <laughs> I think I had like a very experience, um, an interesting experience growing up. Um, like for me, um, you know, both of my parents are Ghanaian immigrants. I was yeah. born in Ghana, but raised here my whole life. I grew up in Compton. Yes, sir. Um, and so for me growing up, there wasn't like tech was never cool like that. Yeah, and man. It wasn't something that like I even wanted to focus on, to be honest. You know, I was mm -hmm. a creator, but that didn't mean I was a techie. And um, you know, that changed when Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone in 2007. Right. Now, his delivery was what I thought was fire. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like he introduced it as three separate devices. He was like, We've created a cell phone. We've mm -hmm. also created an internet device, and we've also created a iPod or a music playing mm -hmm. device. And then like three fourths into his presentation. You realize that he's actually talking about one phone. It's yeah. actually one phone that has three separate features. And I felt like that was fire. And then he talked about how later that year they wanted to uh, introduce a basically a developer platform. And I just knew that like that 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 wasn't normal. You know, because prior to that everybody had Blackberry phones. Yeah. We had, mm -hmm. we had razors and all of that. But the thing is they came with preset apps. You know what I mean? Like, the manufacturer will be like, these are the apps you need on your phone. In there already. And that's mm -hmm. it. And if they wanted to add anything, they would add it from their local service and right. push it via updates. And, and we're we speaking before iPhone. Before iPhone. Correct. You know what I mean? Before iPhone, there was no way you could just go to an app store and just start downloading apps. And those apps that, you know, because they had like little stores on the phone. I remember having like mm -hmm. an LG chocolate and had a store. But those chocolate. apps were made by the same company. Mm -hmm. Right. So Steve was like, now nah, we breaking that. We breaking down that classes and we breaking it out. And now like anybody can make an app. And How old store. were you then? About a guesstimate. Uh, about 10. Yeah. <laughs> How does it? You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that that is when people say natural callings or you know what I'm saying? That's just to be intrigued. You know, and do you find that? That you starting to see more of us starting to become a little bit more savvy, or you, or do you encourage that a little bit more, Idris? Yeah, I feel like now it's starting to be cool. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, of, yeah. Because that's what, what I saw when you said make, making intelligence the new cool. Yeah, because of what you know, like me and Nip did, because of what me and like Jaden are doing, like because of things like that, it's starting to be cool now. Kids are now looking at it because I feel like the disconnect with tech is people think it's all about the product. It's also about the community that builds it. You know what I mean? Right. Like Whether you're using Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever platform, they're only as powerful as their user base. Mm -hmm. So without a base, you know, your product ain't worth it. Right. So I feel like kids are starting to realize that, oh, I, you know, there's strength in being able to be the base of a product. And for me, I think what intrigues them most is that they see how technology can help them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, 
you know, arguably, but Soldier Boy is, it, is very important. You know, right. not Talk only for pop it. culture, but but hip hop culture. You know, being one of the first, you know, urban artists to to start using and the internet to promote music. Mm -hmm. He caught that wave early on. And I feel like a lot of people don't give him his credit for that. Um, he caught the wave early on and he realized the power that he had as as an entity that could that had a base, that had an influence. And he could use this he could use this platform to distribute things. You know, that move, he might not have really realized what he was doing, but what right. he really did was Soldier Boy was like the internet is my iPhone and my music is my app. Mm. Mm. So I'm going to distribute it to this platform and people are going to download it. Mm. So he, he, you know, and I'm sure he hasn't thought about it like that. Right, right, but right. But now he going, you know, how he going to hey, talk man, about it like that? he definitely going to come said. home and be like, <laughs> man, the internet. What, what, what did I just say? Big, shoot me, <laughs> shoot me the link to that so I can get this 100%. Yeah. He, he, he did hear the props, though. He going to definitely hear that. I mean, I feel like the only reason why I mentioned that is to show, especially within the culture, especially hip hop culture, that we've been making the moves. We mm -hmm. just don't think we are. We've been we've been calling the shots. We've been really taking the source code and transforming it into different things. We just didn't know. We just don't know the power in that. Why do you think we spend so much time on making others look good as opposed to making ourselves look good? Like, why do you think, you know, we want to like, like, I know that you're building something and you always been creative. Like, do you see that more of us are starting to get over in, into into programming and, and, and things of that nature. Yeah, I, I strongly feel like we live in a digital revolution era um, where people are starting to, you know, question. You know what I mean? Like, why are there policies like this? Why mm -hmm. are they blocking people? Why are they doing yeah. this? And they starting to go deeper. I do want to ask you about with, and, and I don't know how, you know, I know you're not under no contracts nah. or anything, but, <laughs> but we starting to see, like, Instagram and Twitter, when you know, and I understand Facebook. the platform, Facebook, where they're starting to just really ban people or pull their accounts. It just recently happened to the Honorable Louis Minister Farrakhan, mm -hmm. you know, um, Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I'm starting to see this. Do, do you see that this is starting to become a, a pattern? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And it's been going on. It's now it's now more uh, open because of social media. So I think in the case of, of the minister, um, what people aren't really realizing is like, you know, right after that happened, like, you know, sort of being the voice of the culture for the tech side, I had like hundreds and hundreds of DMs like we need to build a black Twitter. We yeah, need to yeah. Black. But I was like, you know, one, that's not the answer. And two, even if you wanted to, you know, the platform distributor could revoke your app at any given time because now it's sort of racially motivated. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like to to, to even understand the, uh, the reason why Instagram is able to ban uh, the minister, we sort of have to look at the basis of what the United States is. Yeah. And at the base, the heart of what drives the United States is the Constitution. Now, the Constitution is what? The supreme law of the land. Mm -hmm. So with your phone, think of your phone as a nation. And what drives your phone is an operating system. Now, the thing with the Constitution is whoever, you know, those people that sat down from the ground up, were they diverse? No. No, of course exactly. not. Exactly. <laughs> so all right. the laws and, every, and the, everything right, that they create. right. Right. will revolve around a specific demographic yeah. group to mm -hmm. handsomes. So let's think about the operating system of your phone the same way. Whether you're creating an app or whether you're using an app, at the end of the day, it's not. It's, it wasn't created for your benefit. Mm. And at any given time, they could take your powers away. Right. Mm. And we're seeing that in the real world, translating, you know, to to whether it's officers or whether it's you know lawyers or whoever it might be, um, you know, sort of abusing the Constitution mm -hmm. or you know even. Uh, sort of, um, you know, suppressing your uh, your rights. Mm -hmm. um, that's the same thing that's happening in, in technology. It's the same model. It's the same model that happens in the real world. So you they, weren't you weren't surprised by any of that? Huh? I saw it coming. I mean, I've right. been talk, you know we, we yeah. talk, I've been talking about this for like four years, and and that's why um, you know my relationship with Nip was very important. Yeah, and and he saw that because we would talk. We had the same conversation. While we here, I um, I do want to ask you about your relationship with Nipsey Hussle. Man, we just recently lost. A great one. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's been times when Nipsey came in and he explained you guys meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like how yeah. you, how I was like, man, how did you and I, yeah. I just come together? I dress. I dress. Yeah, I dress. Yeah. Even yeah. when we were on the boat, he was like, yeah, I dress. Yeah. But with 
when I saw how he was like, man, I was just at Starbucks and this dude was moving his hands yeah. around and making things Talk move. How did that relationship start with Nip? And what did that relationship mean with Nipsey Hussle? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the last major tech company I consulted for was Uber. Mm -hmm. And over at Uber, I wrote this um, whole program for self-driving cars. So I took a sensor. I basically developed a sensor that could measure your hand in, in, in the car. And if you were driving and you were texting and driving, the car would automatically in real time engage a weight distrib I mean, um, a control distribution. So it would help you drive. If you completely let go in real time, the car will take full control. And if you had no hands on a wheel and, you know, your, your back wasn't inclined at a certain angle, it would detect that you passed out. Mm. The car will engage full uh, control, drive for a couple of miles and then park to the nearest right exit. But I was, you know, just like in this in this zone, like, damn, like. How could we get more black kids to go? How could we get more Latino kids to go? How could we get more minorities in general to program? And I realized that within disenfranchised communities and displaced communities, we look up to the athletes. We look up to the celebrities. We look up to the entertainers. Mm -hmm. So if we could get the entertainers on a mass scale to talk about programming and making it cool, we could get more kids. We can incentivize right. them to want to get in program. So I went to a library. I mean, I went to a Starbucks, just chilling at the Starbucks. I never went to that Starbucks. That's how I know me and Nip were meant to meet, uh, were meant to meet yeah. through God. I was just at that Starbucks modifying the software. I figured, all right, let me take that same application, and now let me switch it over to DJing and musicians. So what if you could make music from thin air? What if we could use those sen same sensors and you could map every um, finger of your hand to, a, to an instrument? Mm -hmm. So an 808, a kick, hi-hat, all of that. So I'm just in oh this library, Lord. bro. I'm just, I mean, I'm just in this Starbucks. Um, just like moving my hands like this, testing the software. Did you working. know Nipsey was looking at you? Nah, he okay. ain't even walked in yet. But I was, I was a fan of his music. Right. He ain't even walked in yet. So I'm just like doing this all over the car. And I just see a Maybach S600 pull up. And um, it was him. And, you know, he has like, you know, two people that, I, that I've had the honor of meeting him, him and uh, as well as Obama. And, and both of them have a they have a they have a certain walk. Oh, yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> they got a certain it's walk. aura, huh? It's this aura. So he walks in and he goes to the front um, and orders a unicorn frappuccino for his daughter. Yes, sir. Aww. So then he goes to the bathroom, comes out the bathroom. Go back in the bathroom. Comes out the bathroom. Go back in the bathroom again. Comes out. I'm like, man, this bro got a bladder problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh. You know, but what I realized was that was far from the re uh, far from the reason. You know, I would later find out that the reason why he went to the bathroom so many times was he wouldn't make sure he wasn't tripping. And he saw what he was I was doing on the computer. Yeah. Because I always sit in the corner and I was just like moving my hands like this. And you know, you saw it on you saw it on the um, <laughs> you know, when we was in the Bahamas. And um you know, he came up to me the, the most respectful way anybody has ever approached me. He was like, hey, bro. No, just you know what I mean? And, like, he could have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, that's a nip that I knew. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, no BS. Like, you know, I'm going to just, you know, say how it is unapologetically. But he came up and he was like, he he tapped me. And he was like, excuse me, sir. Um, you know, I saw what you were doing from a distance, and that looks really interesting. And if you wouldn't mind me taking just two minutes of your time, could you explain to me what that was? Damn. So in my head, I'm like, what the? Like, the, what? You know what I mean? Like, and I just told him what I was working on. And, um, you know, I get, he just saw it then. He just saw something in that moment. He saw a black kid that could have been anything mm -hmm. else or doing anything mm -hmm. else, focused at a Starbucks, wanting to make the world better, wanting to impact the culture better. And so I explained that to him. He gave me his number. We um we linked up in the studio that night. He told me he was working on Victory Lap. Mm -hmm. He played it to me. I make music too. I played in my songs. He was like, oh, you make music too? And you do this? And he was like, all right. So we sat down. We had the same conversation about operating systems and how there's tech bias and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, you heard of the Cartagev scale? He was like, the Cartagev what? I was like, the Cartagev scale. So basically, there's a scale that measures uh, a civilization's technological advancement based on how much power it's able to harness, mm. Mm. right? I was like, there's a type one civilization, a type two civilization, and a type three civilization. A type one civilization can harness the power of its whole planet. A type two can, uh, can harness the power of its sun. And a type three can, van uh, can harness the power of its whole galaxy. And I was like, let's think of hip hop culture as a civilization. Let's think of it as a type one. We're not even a type one civilization yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't we haven't even harnessed the power of the, of of culture of hip hop in itself. Hip hop culture hasn't fully reached its peak yet. And how do I know this? Because we the gardeners that plant the mm -hmm. seed. 
we grow the tree and cultivate it, but we don't get the fruits. Mm. I heard that, brother. You know what I mean? So, like, in me just explaining it to him that way, he was like, you have a gift. And that gift is being able to take the high, you know, information and break it down to the masses. And he was like, I, I got that gift, too. And I've been able to learn business and do everything and learn about vertical integration and everything. Take that and create my own model. So he's like, culture needs that right now. Mm-hmm. And prior to that, like, again, I work with I work with people. I remember, um, you know, the first time we met was um, uh, there was an event with uh, with problem and in, uh, in the game. You know, with the minister. Yeah, yes, sir. For, yes, for sir. gang violence. And that's the first time we met. And I met with a couple of people that night, but nobody saw it. Nip was like, you know, he really saw it and he really co-signed it. So he was like, you're going to ride with me, you know, and I'm going to make sure I put you in every single room um, for people to realize that. So we just started building. And after we talked about that, he was like, how do we get hip hop? How do we get this culture to type one civilization? And I was like, through owning technology, through creating technology rather than consuming if I look at the youth generation, you know, our consumption rate is high, yeah, but our extreme. production rate is low. Mm. Talk about it. Especially with them, the minority culture. It's like we produce so little and consume so, so much. much. Mm. More than any other culture, if you really yeah. think about it. And we put everything over the top, mm. bro. Exactly. So we started talking about that. And then, um, you know, we, we started uh, conceptualizing a smart store. And then um, we just bought, honestly, the way that me and Nick bonded was different because we would bond over books. You know, I mean, he'll be like, you read Contagious? I'll be like, no, nah, I ain't yeah. read that. You read this? <laughs> hey, check out this Steve Jobs book. Check out this algorithm book. Check out this. And then he was like, man, like, I feel like Damn. you really expanded my mind. I was like, yo, you too. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it was so organic. But it was really like, little bro, big bro. You know, mm-hmm. he really took me under his wing. And he was like, I'm going to make sure that the culture understands your message. Because it's important. Because the message ain't just about you. It's about us. And kids got to, like, look at kids in the hood. The same way that they look at, you know, kids in the hood that make it in tech, the same way that we look at Elon or mm-hmm. right. Mark Zuckerberg mm-hmm. right. or whatever it might be. And so, um, yeah, that that was just the beginning of our relationship. And we did the store and it was super successful. And talk um, talk about the, the store as well, man, because I remember going into the marathon yeah. and just the the first smart store. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where y'all were literally pointing things at walls and you know, at CDs and it was coming up on the screen through the app, like that blew me away. Yeah, like me and Nip, it's interesting because we was like, he was like, I'm launching a store. You know what I mean? Like he was launching a store. Yeah. But he was like, I don't want to just launch it like any other store because I understand supply and demand. I understand the what the digital revolution is doing to retail. And retail is basically, um, he thought retail was dying. He was mm-hmm. like, retail is dying. Closer, uh, stores are closing up, blah, blah, yeah. I was like, wow, well, here they are. But you go to other parts of the world, they figured a way to monetize technology. So I was like, the retail game ain't dying. It just needs a transformation. And it's going to be survival of the fittest. The people that are well-equipped and fitted to it are going to survive, and the people that aren't are going to perish. And so he was like, all right, cool. What could we do about that? I was like, I've been working with this new technology called augmented reality. Now, I've been seeing a lot of people using it. You know, to to do, to me, what I thought was bogus stuff, it didn't really have any value. And that's why people didn't know about it. Mm. But I was like, let's take the algorithm, dissect it, just like all these other tech companies did. You know, the iPhone was built on an, opera, uh, on an open source platform. In tech, open source means community platform mm-hmm. available to everybody. And they took that open source platform and created a platform. And now, you know, they're hitting on a trillion dollar valuation. Every other company you see around you, like Steve Jobs said it best, you know, everything that you see around you was designed by people that were no smarter than you. So I told him, we're going to take this augmented reality, we're going to reverse engineer it, and rather than just displaying bogus stuff, we're going to geofence it to your store, and now you could go direct to consumer with your product. Because he was already on this direct to consumer stuff. You know Mm -hmm. what he did with the proud to pay? Yeah, Mm -hmm. after reading Contagious, $100 albums. Um, But he wanted to take it to the next level. And I was like, everybody got phones now. Everybody has a phone in their hand. So that's what we're going to do. Um, for a whole month, we're going to drop exclusive music, um, music that you have recorded that we don't put on Spotify. We don't put on iTunes. We don't put nowhere else. Your store is your new app, right? And the features are the songs. Mm. So what we did was we geofenced the whole store, and then we also added the augmented reality layer, and we put album art, original album art, all throughout the whole store. So you needed a be in the store. Come to it. Download the app 
and scan over to unlock this music. But as soon as you went out, you couldn't have access to it no more. Mm. And so we just saw, like, you know, they're, they're, the supply and demand, like, the demand went high. And a lot of people just came up to the store. And that was, um, you know, what really, um, what really just impacts me is, like, that was only one of the things we were working on. I can, that's what I was like, about to ask, man. That was just like, the intro. What, what, you know what I'm saying? What that was the else? Because, like, I feel like an important moment, and I told you this the last time, we, you know, I saw you, um, you know, Nip really loved you, bro. Like, you know, he really had a lot of genuine, you know, love for you. And every time he talked to me, he would always mention you. He was like, yo, you need to go up to the neighborhood. You need to talk to Big. And, you know, where I really saw that love transcend was, for, for us both, really, was um on the Summer Jam cruise that we yeah. was all on. And Nip was supposed to perform that night. You know, he was going to perform. And um, he canceled the performance because he was like, nah, I want to do a Q&A TED mm-hmm. Talk style thing with you and yeah. introduce you to these people. You know, there's going to be cameras and all of that. Like, I want the culture to really receive you. Um, like, what, you know, Jay was to, to Ye, giving him that Rockefeller chain was what Nip did to me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But what more, he gave me that all money in chain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, when we, were th- uh, when we were thinking about it, then he was like, you know, I want Big to moderate it. He was like, I want nobody else with Big to moderate it. So that was like, I mean, for me, that just showed the love that he had and and, and, and the selflessness he had. Yeah, man. I've worked with people 100%. in the past and like they wanted me to be their secret, you know. Yeah. They want to give you the credit. And, yeah. And put you. Back. And it's not even just about the credit. They also want to like, you know, in a way, like try and sun you and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But again, I'm from Compton, you know, that, yeah. like <laughs> that ain't going to roll, you know. And the tech space, we And you've walked right away now. from a lot. From a lot. Yeah. And um, in this in this space. In this tax base, that's what we need. Because all them other kids, they don't have that. They don't have that streetness in them. Mm-hmm. We got that advantage. Mm-hmm. So if we're able to galvanize off of the authenticity and the genuity and the realness and the no, you know, unapologeticness um, and pair that up with the tech, these kids, you know, Compton, these kids in Inglewood, these kids on Crenshaw in the hood, they're going to be the new model. Mm-hmm. They're going to be the new sort of you know, model that everyone tries to replicate, but they can't replicate them. Because, again, you either really you're not. You hey, I mean? just, can I ask you, where where were you when you found out about about Nipsey getting shot and Nipsey passing? Um, It's interesting because I was actually going to meet him that day. Mm-hmm. Um, But we decided to move the, uh, the meet on a Friday because I'm working on this new project um, for Destination Crenshaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, around like redesigning parking meters and stuff and I was like yo Nip you gave me a start so I want you to be a part of this I want to give you the first right of refusal before I even scale this up so I talked to him I checked in with Sam his brother mm-hmm. and um, we we're supposed to meet for, on Friday and I was literally at the crib like working on my, my, my pitch deck fit and then um, I just happened to hop you know I just happened to hop on Twitter real quick um, I got some texts that led me to go on Twitter real quick. And I just started scrolling through. And my notification just like, boop, 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 boop. Notifications started coming in. I clicked that. And, you know, um, TMZ, you know, had broke the story, I guess, and was like, um, you know, rapper Nipsey Hussle shot, you know, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I, in my mind, I'm like, Nip, man, he going to be cool. That's my mm-hmm. brother. You know, like, yeah. I even tweeted it right after. I was like, man, my brother's going to be fine, period. Like, God got him. But God had a bigger plan for him. Yes, sir. And so um, I remember I called I called my manager and I was like, yo, did you hear? He was like, yeah, man, um, I, j- I just heard right now. And I was like, man, I, honestly, like I wasn't tripping because mm-hmm. I was like, Nip going to be good. You know what I mean? Like Nip, Nip's yeah. going to be good. He's going to be real good. And um, five minutes later, you know, again, but I was I was tense, though. You yeah. know, but five minutes later, I got a call from um from my manager and. I just knew, like I knew before I even answered the phone, and I was like, "Damn, yeah, like, man. I, you know, I know why you're calling me, um, but I'm not ready to accept the message that you're gonna give me." And then he was like, "Man, I got to tell you that." I was like, "Nah, you know, I was just in denial, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very uh, spiritual driven person, and I feel like we could shape the narrative of of, of what we want to be executed in this reality." Mm-hmm. So I was like, "I don't believe it. I really didn't believe it." 
But then the weight of of the universe and God's fate overcame that. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, you're just going to have to accept it. And um, and he told me, and I was just like, I was super tripped out. Um, and I don't I don't live too far from um, um when I'm in L. A. Yeah, I don't live too far from um you know the scene. Um, and then I went there as soon as I could. But by the time I got there, they were like closed and barricaded everything down. And for me, it was like it it hurt because you know you were at the at the at the ribbon cutting. Yeah, man. And he was he was gunned down at the same spot. That we cut the ribbon. Yeah, bro. And then the same amount of streets <clears throat> that we closed when we opened the store were the same amount of streets that were closed when you passed. Mm-hmm. So I just saw these signs from the universe. And to me, it was just like, it just took it all back to that Starbucks moment. And I was like, nah, this wasn't chance. This had to happen. The yeah. universe did this for a reason. And like I said before, I work with so many people. Nip didn't have to push me as hard as he did for the culture but he was like and he would always emphasize it too like your voice needs to be heard and we got to do this now you know he was like right now i was 20 at the time he's like right now is when you're most potent with your message and i got to do what i can to 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 put you front and center um and so for me it was just full circle and i honestly after thinking about it, you know, once you remove sort of the emotion from it, right? I looked at it as a breakthrough because mm-hmm. so many people that didn't even know about Nipsey, so many people didn't even know about mm-hmm. the businesses he was investing mm-hmm. in, now stood up. Yeah, you know, he he started a revolution, and sometimes a chapter of a story has to be closed for a new chapter to be open. Mm-hmm. And what that signified the new chapter being open, that signified literally the revolution and, and, and the beginning of the of the cultural awakening age. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where we're, we're, we're poised with now. Um, to not always look from the exterior, but look from within. Um, How important is it for you to continue? Not not just for NIP, but for NIP and, and the message and everything that you want to accomplish. How, how very necessary is that? Critical, mm-hmm. you know, undeniable. Um, I'm giving the um, commencement speech at NYU in a couple yeah. of days. And, you know, at the beginning, I'm going to do like this little freestyle. And the last two lines, you know, were, um, you know, you got to stand for the same principle. You got um, we got to all live through Nip and always show it. You know what I mean? We all got to live through Nip and always show it because you stood for the same principles your favorite did. And this time we're going to do around, uh, this time we're going to do it around real big. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like people got to, people got to see that like, um, Nip's message wasn't personal. He did this for us. Mm. You know, him running that relay race, um, because a relay race is where you have the baton, not mm-hmm. a marathon. But I just learned that a, c- a couple days ago. Yeah. I was like, the marathon past the baton. <laughs> I was in track. <laughs> and, um, you know, what I, what I learned was um, what he represented was to be a beacon for the youth, mm-hmm. to be a beacon for his tribe, his community, and also the duality of his heritage. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like me, that's why we connected. You know, being Ghanaian American, he was Eritrean American. So he went back just like I went back. You know, and so his legacy is it's undeniable because for you to for you to not even live through Nip, for you to not continue his legacy, for you to not see himself in you, you know, means that you don't see, you know, Malcolm in you. You don't mm-hmm. see Pac in you. Mm-hmm. You don't see Big in you. You don't see any of these people that came before, but... Like I say, you know, whereas Pac spoke death, Nip breathed life. Mm-hmm. You know, Nip was about giving you the blueprints. And, and you know, I was reading in a book, they say uh, you need three things to change a community. You need economic power, um, political power, and buying power. Mm-hmm. Legends that came before us, they gave us political power. They gave us all the political ammo we, need, we needed. But when it came to the core economic infrastructure, we didn't have nothing. But Nip... He gave us the economic blueprints. Mm-hmm. He gave us the buying power blueprints all throughout his music, all throughout his investments. So I think now more than ever, um, it's it's mandatory for all of us um, to, to live through him and continue his legacy. Um, and his message was all about infrastructure, owning and not just mm-hmm. renting. When you build an app in a store, you're renting. When you rent a place, in a, uh, when you rent a house, you're renting. Right, right, you know what I mean? Right. All of that is the same category. But... For him, he's like, which is true, to be able to really impact the community, you need to be in, in, in control and you need to be able to tell your own story rather than waiting for somebody to tell it for you. Man. You know, one thing I've always realized is whether metaphorically or literally, 
whenever you let somebody tell your story for you, it always gets watered down. Yeah, mm-hmm. bro. Always. And then the more people, the more it gets watered down. Yeah. You like tell I, somebody I could this. send a story around the room right now. By the, By time, the time it gets back, back yeah. it's a whole it's different like, story. It's like, a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, if pieces. it gets um, back. Hey, you know huh? Big was, you know, he was born in Cuba. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. To Guatemalan parents. Yeah. They With start. a Japanese stepsister, like uh-huh. okay, all righty, yeah. you know. As I, I gotta ask you this, man. With all the accolades, the things that you're working on, we haven't even seen the best yet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You didn't go to college. Yeah. You could have. Mm. How yeah. crazy is it that you didn't go to college, but you're going to do the commencement speech <laughs> at NYU with pretty much peers that's the same age as you? I feel like I feel so humiliated. And honored, you know, and I could say I learned a lot of that through Nip. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he was he was really big bro. You know what I mean? Like the footage, you could go online and watch the Q&A that him and I did. And even at that time, I wasn't as confident as I am now. Mm-hmm. You know, my hair was all low. I was yeah. like, oh, you know, I was real shy at that point. But he he molded me into, you know, having being OK, you know, and, and, and not needing to apologize and being unapologetic with your message and being confident. You know, right. um, but not cocky, mm. you know, being very, very confident. And if you if you look at Nip, he wasn't cocky, he was very, 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 very confident, mm-hmm. you know, and, and he, he sort of like molded me into that. So when I think of, you know, this honor of being able to deliver the commencement speech at NYU at, 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 at 22, two days after my birthday, um, it's an extreme honor. Um, you know, I remember. But again, it, it was it, it's the confidence too, and knowing that, like, you know, it's deserved. Too. Yeah, yeah, easy call. It's, it's deserved like, because, like, all these other kids, you know, all well, these. They other definitely th- had asked me to be a keynote speaker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know? Like these these tech founders and stuff, they do they do things like this all the time, you know. But for us, um, I think it's like really important. Like I turned down MIT, mm-hmm. oh, wow. um, and I remember they wrote to me twice, and I I, I turned down uh, both of those. And I remember everybody from my community being like, how could you do that? You know, as a black man, like you understand the rarity of that in general, let alone being a black man, let alone being a black man that mm-hmm. wants to go in tech. Like all, these white kids, they could do that. They could, you know, drop out and go build a billion dollar company and be right. okay. And you don't have that luxury. Society has so many. But I was like, no, nah, we're going to break down those stereotypes. We're going to break down those walls. You know, we're going to break that glass ceiling. And the only reason why I didn't go is because I already found my purpose. Mm. And my purpose was really impacting the youth and pointing them in the right direction infrastructurally, not to be a consumer. Consumerism is killing our kids. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it should it should it should be infrastructural development. So in the case of that, when I didn't go, I had I had I had the right game plan. And I told people too, like, watch it. What do you do from here now um, that you that you can share? That I can't share. That you can. Mm-hmm. Oh, that I can share. Um, you know, right now, uh, everything for me cuts down to infrastructure. So, you know, to all those people like, you know, um, man, we need to build a social media platform and blah, blah, blah. We working on something bigger. Right. And, you know. How scared should I be of my phone? Uh, or when you know how you hit like agree? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like man. we just scroll to the bottle and yeah. hit agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, turn. Yeah, your terms. You must agree. Or I feel like let's get into that for uh, for a quick second. You know, um, with any app, what happens is you're given a contract. It's literally a contract. It's called a EULA, end user licensing agreement, and it's basically a, a contract of adhesion. Now, with a contract of adhesion, for anybody that's in law, um, it's basically a take it or leave it. Um, right, yeah, because you can't yeah. like, ah, uh, it's so like what happens is, you can't move yeah. past. Yeah. So what happens is every single time you download a new app, the first thing that comes up is that EULA. But again, we know for not reading, and yeah. we just scroll all the way to the bottom and click agree. Like, just give me yeah, this app. It, it could be like, man, we taking your firstborn. They can knock on my door and be like, uh, is Jaden here? I'm like, what you talking about? <laughs> exactly. So like, what's going on with tech right now with the the banning of our of our leaders and all of that? They're entitled to do that because it's in the EULA. You know, uh, morally it's wrong. Right. But, you know, legally they can. And so what that just shows us is not only should we start reading, but we should also start thinking about ways to put ourselves in power and and really build infrastructure. Because because, you know, at the end of the day, that's what matters. And and that's my thing right now. That's why I've been fighting. You know, I'm I'm fighting battles people can't even see. Why do you think we are so into letting others 
build. And I don't mean others just by tone, but it's like, even with us, we, we have these ideas and we'll kind of kill things on the vine. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't, you know, but we're fine with letting the next man mm -hmm. create it. You know, yeah. like, do people look at you when you talk? Has anyone ever said, man, you crazy? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Well, yeah, absolutely. But that that fuels me. Yeah. It's like, you know, I have that. I have that in me. And, 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 and it's just like, all right, OK, cool. Because I've always been that person that people were like, I've seen things. I'm seeing things 15 years from now. Yeah. And I know what AI is going to do. I know what tech bias is going to do. I know what algorithm, should I say algorithm, tech, technology is never biased. Do you people. ever get nervous by how much information you know? Um, I only get nervous when I don't share it. Right, okay. Um, so that's why, I mean, on IG, I post everything. On uh, Exposure OS, um, I post everything. And I feel like Nip is resting peacefully um, wherever he is, knowing that he, he has interviews. You know, his daughter will grow up, you know, in, in, in five years, 10 years, she has footage of her dad talking mm -hmm. about her and, you know, the Always parents of her. a father being in a child's life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what he talked about with vertical integration and owning and not, you know, he, he'll, he'll be very proud knowing that his music will continue to live on and he owned his masters. Right. You know, he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll be proud with stuff like that. So I feel like it is our duty to, to not galvanize off of the, our own information and use that to displace people. But to spread that and um and, and and expose as well as inspire others. So for me, I only get nervous when I just have all this information to myself. Mm -hmm. And for me, my stress relief and my meditation is going through the books that I've read, selecting the best ones, and posting it on IG or just sharing it with the world. And, and where can we find you on IG? Once again, I know I follow. Yeah, follow yeah my IG now. is um Idris Sandu I D D R I S S A N D U. Um, man, same on all my thank social you for media coming into the neighborhood, yeah. man. We yeah. wish you nothing you. but the best. And when you do the keynote speaking over at uh, NYU, I, I won't be there, you know what I'm saying? But I'll spare the video know, with you. you. Know, no, nah, but thank you, man. And, and we got to continue to take care of our own, yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? We got to continue, you know, to make to make sure that we get your messages out mm -hmm. that you take care of us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we, we, we got to do it. You know, all right. Yeah, that's important. I thank, thank you, you brother. So much appreciate. Yeah. All righty, now that is the conduit between fashion, culture, and technology. There we go. Idris Sandu in the neighborhood, man. Big boys' Big neighborhood. Boy.